bare minimum you need to do when investing in real estate is to run your numbers. In this video, I'm going to take you step by step through my real estate calculator that I've used for my own deals and do it on a real life property. And as a cherry on top, I'll give you my real estate calculator for free. Just reach out to me on my website, melanasimsic.com or reach out to me on Instagram and I'll send it over to you. Also, if you get confused on anything along the way, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Leave as many as you like. I tend to respond to all of them. Anyways, let's get right into it. So I found a sixplex in a prime central location in Windsor, Ontario, which is where I'm becoming a realtor and where I'm investing in real estate. It's actually really similar to a sixplex I own, so I can give you guys a good idea of what to expect from this one. So let's start looking at the features of this property before we delve into the numbers. What I can tell from the description here is that it's a six unit building with two bed, one bath units. Two bed, one baths have a higher demand and you typically get longer term tenants. This is a perfect size for a young professional who wants a bedroom and an office space. A nice feature about this property is that you have separate electricity meters. So that means that your tenants pay for their own electricity and that's one cost off of your plate as an owner. You can also see them outside here and then the basement area here in this picture. It looks like the landlord pays water for the whole building and for the common area electricity, which is something we need to take into our expenses later on when we pull up the calculator. The description states that the property has coin operated laundry. So that's an extra source of income there and a nice additional service for your tenants. It also has parking for tenants, which is a big plus. Um, you can normally charge a little more for rents because of that, especially if it's something like a student rental or in a high density area that doesn't commonly have private parking. Another thing to note here is that these units don't look like they were renovated since this property was built, judging from the 1990s style renovations. I literally grew up with this renovation style. Um, that's not really an issue because these are just lipstick renovations and are a great way to build potential by modernizing the units. But what this tells me is that there wasn't much tenant turnover and I can bet that these rents are well below market value, especially since the rents are not in the description. This one unit does look recently renovated though and they might have a newer tenant in there and I can tell because it has the trendy gray laminate floors and the grayish blue walls that have been popular for a few years. As I mentioned, the actual rents are not in the description, but you can get this information from the listing agent. But for the calculator, I'll just put market rents for now and show you how to find that. So to find out how much rents are going for in a certain area, this is what I do personally. I look at Kijiji, rentals.ca, and Facebook Marketplace for current rentals. I'll take the postal code of the property that I want to buy and I'll put it into their search bars and put the radius down to one kilometer. Then I'll find comparable rentals with the same bedrooms and bathrooms, maybe similar renovation styles and see how much they're going for. I already know that a two bed, one bath will go for about 1400 to 1600 in this area. So I'll put 1400 as a conservative number. I'll probably do another video to show you guys how to set a rental rate for your property and go more in depth there. Okay, so now that we've taken a quick look at the property, let's run some quick numbers to see if it's even worth pursuing. So I kind of work backwards here. Um, I'll start by putting the rents first, which are $1,400 each. Also for the laundry, you should expect about 80 bucks a month for six units, at least in my personal experience. And we have a total of $8,480 per month in gross rental income. So let's start taking away from that and putting in expenses, which is the not fun part. <laughs> so I'll put the asking price into the first slot here. It may or may not go for this much depending on what the owner wants, but we'll just assume asking price for this. But this is a pretty typical price for this kind of property in that area. So since this is a six unit building, you might have a higher interest rate depending on your mortgage broker. For me personally, I got a 1.65% interest rate on my sixplex. If you're a client of mine, I'll refer you to my amazing mortgage broker who got this for me. But for conservative numbers, I'll put 2% on this one in today's market. For closing costs, I typically do one to 3% of the purchase price. You're gonna be looking at legal fees, land transfer tax, which is a huge one, title insurance, property inspection fees, etc. For this situation, I'll do 2%. Another thing 
to note with the land transfer tax, especially in Windsor, Ontario, if you're buying your first investment property and it's owner occupied, the land transfer tax is waived. That's one of the reasons I bought a sixplex as my first investment property, so I wouldn't have to pay that land transfer tax. So I have a column here to take repair costs into account as well. If you wanted to do lipstick renos for each unit, meaning like new kitchen cabinets, updated bathroom, flooring, and paint, and you want to hire out for all of that, I would put about 20,000 per unit for lipstick rentals. For now, we'll leave it blank because the units are in okay condition and it'll complicate things. Down payment, you'll typically need at least 15% for a six unit building, according to my mortgage broker and the CMHC website. And that's what I put down on my six unit building as well. So we'll assume 20% here just to be safe. The down payment part is tricky to figure out sometimes because it really depends on the property, your financial situation, what you're doing with the property and your mortgage broker. According to the CMHC website, if you're moving into a two unit or less, you can put 5% down if it's worth under $500,000. Four units or less, it's 10%. If you're not moving into this investment property at all, just assume 20% unless your mortgage broker says otherwise. It could be less, it could be more. So for a 20% down payment, you'll need $230,000 in cash, which I'm sure we all just have laying around, basically pocket change. Another thing to note here is I have cost of mortgage insurance here as well, which is what you pay when you put less than a 20% down payment. It's called CMHC mortgage insurance. Uh, I don't know if Americans have uh, like an extra cost for your FHA loans, but it's something similar there. Keep in mind, sometimes you can pay CMHC insurance, even if you're paying over 20%, depending on the risk to the lender. So in this calculator, if you guys use it for your personal use, I put the maximum percentage you can get charged, which is 4%. But if you're plugging in for a 20% down payment, just take this part out to simplify it for you. So for the amortization rate, I put 25 years, which is typical. Um, you can go up to 30 years, which is what I did for my sixplex to increase my cash flow, but that's another video for another day. I also included the amount you pay on interest over 25 years just for fun. Uh, don't let the high number scare you though, because you're gonna lose more to inflation if you don't invest. So we can see the monthly cost for the loan is about 3,900 per month. Um, I also included the yearly cost for fun as well. At the bottom here, you can see how much cash you're gonna need upfront to buy this property, right? So the first one is the closing costs and down payment only. The second column is closing costs, down payment, and repairs. They're the same because we didn't put in any repairs. It'll automatically calculate this for you. I included repairs separately because you typically pay that portion little by little as you slowly have turnover and upgrade the property. So property taxes. You could typically find it in the description, but it's not here, so I'm gonna find it myself. Uh, to do this, I go to my city website. I go to public property inquiry. I plug in the property address and I find the property taxes here. Uh, so we can see it's $7,783.90, which is about 650 bucks a month, which my calculator will automatically do that for you. So utilities. We know electricity can be paid by the tenants. Uh, we also know that we have to pay for water and common area electricity. So for my six unit building with laundry, the water is about 500 bucks a month and the common area electricity is about $100 a month. So we'll put 500 for water and $100 for electricity. Another thing we have to take into account is appliance rentals, hot water tank rentals, etc. Doesn't say that anything's rented in the description. Since we don't know and that's something we have to find out from the listing agent. We're just gonna leave this blank for now. PMI is mortgage insurance if you have some additional costs there. It's what I explained earlier about CMHC. For garbage, for my six unit building, I have a commercial garbage bin and you're probably gonna need it for this one as well. So I pay 70 bucks a month for that and they take it out twice a month. So HOA, what this means is homeowners association and it's basically a group of people in the community that tell you what to do with your property and you pay them for it. Kind of like the government, but worse. Luckily, there's no HOA here, so we'll leave it blank. Monthly property insurance. I pay about 230 bucks a month for my six unit building. If anybody knows any better deals, let me know. Um, but we'll assume around 250 to be safe. Flood insurance, uh, not necessary with this property. I'll tell you that right off the bat. But another tip I can tell you is you can find flood zone maps in your city and see if that property is in one. Also, a property inspection is important here to see if there had been 
any previous water damage. Lawn maintenance and snow removal. Um, I put about a hundred bucks a month. My property is about the same size as this one. Property management. If you want good property management that does everything, I'd put about 7% of gross rents in here and they should do the lawn maintenance for you as well at that price. This calculator will automatically calculate this for you. If you include the property management, take away the lawn maintenance costs. We have vacancy rates here and I put 3% for this because vacancy is about that much in Windsor currently. Uh, this is a quick Google search away if you need to look in another city. So repairs and maintenance uh, really depend on the property. Judging from this property, this looks like a newer one. It looks like it's from the 1990s. So I expect less maintenance. A good rule of thumb if you're not too experienced in renovations and maintaining properties is to take five to 15% of your gross rents and apply that every single month. Since this is a newer property, I'll just put 5% because there's not gonna be much to do here. So let's take a look at our results here because this is where the real magic happens. Okay, so what return on investment means in this first column is looking at the percentage you get back in cash flow from the money you put in. So to kind of explain that, we have a net cash flow of about 20,800 per year, right? And if we sink $253,000 into this property, it works out to about 8%. So we would do 20,878 and then divide that by $253,000 and we get about 8% there. So that's not that great. Um, that's about how much you get back from an index fund, right? So we got to look at the second ROI here, which is with equity buildup. The reason I kept these two separate is because some investors like to look at the ROI based on how much cash flow they'll get back because they have different goals with investment properties, right? I've included equity buildup for those investors that want to focus on building long-term wealth and want to take that into account for their calculations. So if you look at the return on investment with equity buildup, the ROI is 18.79%, which is fantastic. I would expect at least a 15% return here as a general rule of thumb. Otherwise you might as well invest in an index fund that's more passive because that extra 7% is gonna account for all the trouble you went through to get this property, right? I know this can seem a little bit confusing at first, but the best way to learn is to practice yourself. Leave a comment again if you have any questions. I try to answer all of them and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.